Welcome to a special June Bugs edition of Tuneheads. Over a span of 60 years, Bugs Bunny appeared in 177 Warner Brothers cartoons. What's up, Doc? What's cooking? What's up, Doc? Oh, you're looking for Bugs Bunny Bun Thing. Duck is gonna hunt thing just to get a rabbit skin, but now the rabbit's gonna get. What's up, Doc? What's cooking? Hey, look out! Stop! You're gonna hurt someone with that old shotgun. Bugs Bunny, that carrot-chomping rascal, has become a national hero, a corporate symbol, and the biggest cartoon star of the 20th century. You know how I hate to talk about myself. And while Bugs has endured the test of time, the landscape of American culture has radically changed. Sixty years of styles, fashions, and attitudes have come and gone. Stop that damn thing up there! You silly and our concept of humor has evolved as well. I think I'll try some changes in the act, the next performance. Certain stereotypes that were considered funny to audiences of 1940 are offensive to audiences of 2001. Which way do you go? Which way do you go? There he goes. Where? There. Go get him. Some of the films Bugs Bunny appeared in over 50 years ago have become dated. Open up that door! You notice I didn't say Richard? Yosemite Sam's reference to Richard is a joke relating to Count Basie's 1947 hit song, Open the Door, Richard. Most viewers of today don't understand many of these dated gags. References to contemporary trends like movies, personalities, books, and popular music were common in the satirical Warner Brothers cartoons. 1940s attitudes toward certain ethnic cultures and minorities were fair game for all movie makers, cartoonists, and humorists. Huh? Eh, up, These points of view are no longer considered correct or tolerable in today's culture. Throughout the years, local television stations, Turner Entertainment Networks, and Warner Brothers have removed certain cartoons from television circulation. Antiquated stereotypes perpetuated in these cartoons, particularly toward minority groups, were never in good taste. Only now, as a society, are we recognizing this injustice. Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network understand our responsibility to the community and to impressionable young minds who watch our network. But what were these cartoons? What was their intent? Who made them? And why were they pulled from television? To tell the complete story of Bugs Bunny, tonight, Toonheads devotes a special episode to the 12 missing hairs. Ethnic humor has been an American comedy staple since the early days of vaudeville in the 19th century. The melting pot of immigrants that formed America in the early 20th century provided the inspiration to performers, writers, and cartoonists. Cartoonists in particular found they could get an easy laugh by identifying a minority group with a few lines of accented dialogue and caricatured ethnic facial features. No group was spared. Not celebrities. Now, how about a little kiss, baby? Politicians. <laughs> or even the movie going public. All ethnic groups were caricatured. Oh, Fortune on my property. Ah, oh, little rabbit. Please hold the balloons until I tie the shoelace. All right, rabbit. Where's Rocky? Where's he hiding? When Tex Avery directed the cartoon A Wild Hare in 1940, he unknowingly created the most beloved cartoon character in the history of animation. What's up, Doc? Bugs is still the wise guy we all remember, but America has changed dramatically from the time of the rabbit's creation. See, you know, I knew I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. Okay.
Bugs Bunny was born in the summer of 1940, a time when America was still formally segregated, a time before Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier in baseball, before President Truman desegregated the military, before the federal government integrated the nation's public schools. And while animated cartoons have generally been considered timeless evergreen entertainment for all ages, the 12 Bugs Bunny cartoons withheld from programming reflect views we as a nation no longer tolerate. Flying the run all night, flying the run all day, I'll bet my money on a popping light, somebody there on the day. The black stereotype in early Hollywood feature films was consistently negative. And his pockets high from the ground, old high pocket. <laughs> While it was commonplace to see black actors in feature films, their roles were usually limited to loyal domestic help, primitive jungle natives, or slow-witted field hands. I was the foreman. I was the one who says when it's quitting time of terror. Quitting time! The idea of replacing Elmer Fudd with this sort of character was tried only once by Tex Avery in the 1941 cartoon, All This and Rabbit Stew. Oh, well. <laughs> Avery didn't hold back in presenting the complete, insulting, stereotyped image, including a lazy shuffle, a raspy voice, well, shut my mouth. Wait it, tracks. and an addiction to gambling. Bits, Doc. To the animators and audiences at the time, this offending image was seen as just another foil for Bugs Bunny's sharp, humorous attacks. In fact, a few years later, when Elmer Fudd was established as Bugs Bunny's main foe, Bob Clampett reused this chase scene, substituting Fudd in place of the previous hunter. White performers in blackface was a common sight in vaudeville and early films. In fact, the practice continued in Hollywood musicals through the Second World War. Al Jolson, who made a career singing Mammy in blackface, established Warner Brothers as a major Hollywood studio in 1927 with his smash hit film, The Jazz Singer. The animators at Warner Brothers often poked fun at Jolson, just as they did most Hollywood stars. In this rare 1942 promotional film, Bugs mocks Jolson, encouraging moviegoers to buy war bonds. We all invest in the USA. Sammy, my, my Uncle Sammy. Particularly telling that this stereotype was used to promote the sale of war bonds. Our government and society were blind to the pain these images caused African Americans. When Bugs Head South in Mississippi Hair, the animators parodied black-faced minstrel shows as a joke to insult a wealthy Southern gambler. And the gentleman wins a cigar. The camp town ladies sing this song. Do -da, do -da. The joke isn't the funny to most viewers of today. We will return in a moment to the special Toonheads presentation, The Twelve Missing Hairs. Welcome back to Toonheads special presentation, The Twelve Missing Hairs. Through the 1960s, cowboy movies and western TV series were a tradition of American storytelling. The tales of heroic cowboys and their conflicts with Native American Indians were standard attractions at the movie matinees each week. Lampooning this genre was very popular among most animators. Indian. 
Particularly insulting was Hollywood's portrayal of Indians as savages and illiterates, unable to grasp the English language. Me thank him you heap much. Er, uh, ugh. Occasionally, animators would use a Native American backdrop and create characters taking their cue from established Hollywood stereotypes. Uh-oh. The natives are in an ugly mood. Bugs Bunny first encountered an American native in Hiawatha's rabbit hunt. The rabbit! A takeoff of Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's famous 19th century poem and a Disney cartoon adaptation. Darn that little old rabbit. I'm gonna fix him, all right, all right. I'm gonna fix him. I'm gonna fix him, all right, darn little old rabbit. Hey, uh, what are you gonna do with that rope, Chief? I'm gonna take this rope and I'm gonna tie you up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's just what I'm gonna do. Gonna tie me up, huh? <laughs> oh, that's a pip! Oh, gonna tie me up. <laughs> Say it again, Chief! Say it again! In fact, this spoof earned Bugs an Academy Award nomination in 1941. Ah, it's in the bag. I'm a sense to win. Rally, I am. The Oscar nomination was parodied in Bob Clampett's 1944 What's Cookin' Doc, as Bugs attends the Academy Awards ceremony and shows the clip from the Hiawatha film. <laughs> uh, some of my best scenes. <laughs> Smokey, roll him. In the 1948 cartoon, A Feather in His Hair, Chuck Jones created an unusually nasal Last of the Mohicans character with the voice supplied by story man Ted Pierce. Me try catch him rabbit. Me no catch him rabbit. Me catch him me. While this character might have been funnier or at least more acceptable if cast as a cowboy, it seems cruel when applied to Native American culture. Of all the cartoon stars Frizz Freeling created, no character is more misguided than Yosemite Sam. Okay, boys, here's a chance we've been awaiting for to capture the fort. In Horsehair, he was the leader of a group of savage Indians. Watch where you're shooting them arrows, you engine engine! This cartoon is particularly insulting and perpetuates the outmoded stereotypes of the past. One little, two little, three little engines. Four little, five little, six little engines. Uh-oh, sorry, that one was a half-breed. Seven little, eight little, nine little engines. Ten little engine boys. During World War II, Bugs Bunny was at the height of his initial popularity. <laughs> his brash attitude What's up, Doc? was an inspiration to war-weary soldiers and their home front families. Hey, watch your blood pressure, Chubby. You're liable to bust the mainspring. <laughs> All of Hollywood got behind the war effort, including Bugs Bunny. But these images from Harameet's hair of Bugs Bunny battling Nazis do not belong on a television network geared toward children's programming. Cartoons like this deserve to be preserved as part of our American history, but their general entertainment value over the years has clearly diminished. Does your tobacco taste different lately? After Japan's surprise attack at Pearl Harbor, no one could deny the anger most Americans felt towards our enemy. 
During this era, animators had a field day insulting the Japanese military. Here you are, here's yours, bull eggs. Here, one for you, monkey face. And don't shove this plenty for all. Here you are, slant eyes. Everybody gets one. Ice cream. Well, that's that. But today, 60 years later, the war is long gone and Japan is one of our closest allies. The wartime cartoon, Bugs Bunny Nips the Nips, is highly offensive and clearly unsuitable to air on Cartoon Network. Over Bugs Bunny's 60-year career, the animators have had fun placing bugs in many locales around the world and beyond. I'm alone! I'm alone on the moon! Squaring off with international adversaries like a Transylvanian vampire. Blood count. A Scottish golfer. An abominable snowman. My own little bunny rabbit dying. And of course, the Tasmanian Ow. devil. Put me down, you baggy eyed devil. Hollywood viewed other countries, their peoples, and customs as strange and mysterious. It was thought that characters from these exotic locations could make for colorful, unusual new adversaries. Although some of these new characters were a hit. Special delivery from Mars. Oh, goody, another uranium P-36 explosive space modulator. Not all of the attempts were successful. Hey, what's the idea? Give me that thought. Don't let me hear about you playing with matches, either. This Eskimo character from 1949's Frigid Hair does not properly represent the Arctic native and their habitat. Get off of me, you big baboon! Now see what you got us into? <coughs> Stop breathing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> the Australian Aborigine were misrepresented by this wild character in the 1950 cartoon, Bushy Hair. Now look, Major Boy, don't give me no trouble. Jungle witch doctors are part of Hollywood's stereotype of African natives. In Witch's Witch, Bugs disguises himself as a native villager, perpetuating another negative stereotype of the African people. We will return in a moment to this special Toonheads presentation the 12 missing hairs. Welcome back to Toonhead's special presentation, The 12 Missing Hairs. At Cartoon Network, we understand that our programming appeals to animation fans of all ages. Break a crack a firecracker, sis, boom, ba! Bucks, bunny, bucks, bunny, ra, ra, ra! A majority of our classic cartoons, some over 70 years old, continue to be enjoyed as contemporary entertainment. Doggone you old mean wabbit! In a library as big as ours, some episodes, remarkably few, 
contain outdated images and inappropriate messages no longer suitable for our younger viewers. These films have been withdrawn from our programming library out of concern for all and for the greater good. But film history and Bugs Bunny's complete story cannot be ignored. We cannot erase the past nor sweep it under the rug. These 12 cartoons should not be judged by today's standards. What did I say? What did I say? Many of these cartoons were embarrassing and painful to the minorities they ridiculed at the time. But we have since grown as a nation and our consciousness has been raised. Bugs Bunny is an American symbol and part of our cultural heritage. As caretakers of the Waskly Wabbit, Warner Brothers and Cartoon Network are well aware of our responsibility to the audience of parents, children, and cartoon buffs. Cartoon Network will not permit negative stereotypes and offensive images to air on our network. Hey! <laughs> uh, wrong picture. We hope tonight's Toonheads presentation provided some insight into this sensitive issue. Please enjoy the rest of Cartoon Network's Junebug special. For more information about classic cartoons, catch Toonheads every Sunday night at 10 p.m. only on Cartoon Network. <laughs>